Before we jump to Photoshop, I want to take a minute to tell to just explain that there's no kind of right and wrong answer to what you're doing. And so in the first example that I explained in the last video, I just said you could kind of copy and paste and you could put one image on top of another and you could use them that way. And for the second example, I said, well, you could keep all of both of the images. You have the image of the girl, you have the image of the sunset, you combine them, you still have all of them, but they're kind of interacting with each other. Whereas with the first example, one's just sitting over the top. If you combine them using layer masks, which we've already learned for, for a previous lecture, you can kind of combine the best of both worlds. And so in this example here, I have an image of clouds and I have an image of the forest and I wanted to add some texture to the bottom of the forest. Maybe I'm trying to make it look more whimsical or more creepy or more scary. Maybe it's a, a haunted forest or something like that. And I'm trying to create some sort of um, stylized look. And so with a layer mask, um, or even with painting with a brush, and I'll show you that option too, um, you can combine both images. And so in this, this third example here, it's the two images combined using a layer mask. And I've feathered the edge of it so there's a soft transition between the clouds and the trees. But it still doesn't look right, it just looks weird. If you combine that with the blending modes of layers, you can combine the best of both worlds and you can combine how they interact and still have the two images combined together and still have some of the tree image and some of the cloud image remaining kind of pure and not modified and then you can combine them that way and so if you look at my example here um, the clouds in the middle they're still looking like clouds and so maybe there's some sort of maybe it's for a book cover and there's some sort of spirit that lives in the forest and so that represents the spirit whoops um, and the bottom half, it's, it's creepy and the colors are all blown out and it's kind of psychedelic and that was created using a layer of blending mode. And so you're going to kind of start to experiment and see how the combination of the images would work for whatever your, your project needs are. Um, with that being said, I'm going to jump to Photoshop now and I'm going to demonstrate how to do these first three things. And so you need to grab some images to use. Um, I could not find any images in the stock images that I have provided for the class. Um, so I went on the internet and I did search.creativecommons.org and I found some, some images that we could use for this project. I found this picture of a banner on a building is what I searched for. And I'm going to use it. Maybe it's a stock photograph and I want to replace my advertisement over whatever that advertisement says. Hopefully it's not offensive. I can't read it because it's not in the language that I know. And I've decided that I'm going to make it a Pepsi ad. And I chose this Pepsi ad for a couple of reasons. It's not the same aspect ratio, meaning the width of um, the aspect ratio or the ratio between the width and the height is not the same. The Pepsi ad is landscape orientation, whereas the banner is vertical. But you can kind of visually see that I'm going to have to deselect. I'm going to have to basically grab this part of the image and use that for the banner. We need to get the two images into the same file, and there are a couple ways to do that. We haven't really talked too much about bridge since the beginning of the semester, but having a good bridge workflow, or if you're a photographer, a Lightroom workflow, um, it allows you to keep yourself organized, but it also allows you, if you go to wherever your files are saved, so I just dumped mine on the desktop for now, if you select multiple files in bridge, you can choose under the tools and Photoshop to uh, to load your sorry I'm losing my eyesight uh, to load your files into a Photoshop document with multiple layers and so one way to combine images into one document is to select all the images that you want to work with and to go to the tools menu in Adobe Bridge Photoshop because that's where you want to launch and then choose to load the files into Photoshop layers and when you do that, you'll have one document that has two layers. In our case, if you had 12 documents selected, then you'd have one document with 12 layers. Now, they're kind of in the wrong order because I have to close one to see the other. And so I would then drag and drop the Pepsi in front because that's eventually what's going to be sitting in front of the billboard. Another way to do that is to recognize, let's go back to our Pepsi ad. Uh, another way to recognize that is that uh, you could copy and paste and you could recognize that you only need maybe this chunk in the middle for the billboard and you could copy it, edit copy, and then you could go to your other document and you could paste it. 
you have resolution issues, whether you are combining through Bridge or you're copying and pasting. And so my recommendation is before you even do this, you should be looking at your file and make sure that they have similar re uh, resolutions. And so if one image resolution is set to 72 and one is set to 300, you should kind of compare apples to apples before you copy and paste. If you paste an image and it looks really, really small compared to the other one, or vice versa, if you paste an image and it's just way big and it's off the screen, um, it makes it more difficult to work with that. One last option is you don't even have to make a selection. Maybe you're not comfortable figuring out uh, which part of the Pepsi ad um, you're going to use and not use. And so in that case, what you could do is you could select all, select an all, or you could do command or control A. And then you could copy, command or control C, or edit, copy. And then you can paste the entire thing. And so when you paste that, edit, paste, then you have everything. And now you can kind of work backwards, and you could slowly eliminate the things that you don't need. Um, however you want to do that, I would like you to get your Pepsi can into or your advertisement into your document before you move forward. And uh, one last thing I want to show you before I move forward with the actual demonstration about how to fix it and make it look like the banner has the Pepsi ad is I need to get rid of, if I copy and pasted everything, if I had this guy here, you need to get rid of the stuff that you don't want. And I know that what I'm about to tell you does not align to non-destructive editing. And I know that all semester I've been telling you non-destructive editing, non-destructive editing. In this particular case, it's going to be much easier to get rid of the part that you don't want than to hide it in some way because we're going to use the distort command to distort the image and pull it and, and place it where we want it to go. Because if you look at my other example, you can see that this image will not just paste on the top of the banner. Even if I made it bigger so that it was on the top of the banner to the bottom, it's not going to look like it's sitting on the banner unless we do something to it. And so we're going to have to distort it in some way. And so it's much easier if you use that destructive editing and you get rid of the part that you don't want. I would recommend don't get rid of too much, right? So maybe you think you need all the way to here. Maybe we'll just crop out or select and delete. I'm literally hitting the delete key here. Um, well, it would help if you were on that layer. There we go. I'm going to hit the delete key now. Um, and you can delete the part you don't want. Error on the side of keeping more than you think you need because you can always go back and and uh, delete some more if you don't use it. Okay, I'm gonna trash this layer because I have my Pepsi ad in the same document. The next thing that we would consider is, do I need to do anything to the banner before I put Pepsi in front of it? And the answer is, I don't know, right? Because I just wanna sit the Pepsi on top of it for now, and I wanna hope it looks fine when I sit it on top. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure Pepsi can sit on top of the banner. But I might have to eventually get rid of all the, the writing that's on the banner. Can you see that the white banner, it has seams in it and it has texture and you can clearly see that the artwork is being pulled. Um, if I want to blend the Pepsi image into that background so that I'm starting to see that texture, then I would need to get rid of the words. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do it without doing it. And then if I need it, then I'll go back and I'll get rid of the, the words. And you should know how to get rid of that because we talked about it earlier in the semester in an earlier video, we used content aware fill. And that's one way to use it to, to get rid of an element. Um, then we could also use it to add more elements. And so if I wanted to add more banners across the building, or if I, if I end up not being able to put the Pepsi ad, can you see that if I was to make this bigger, so that it touched the top and the bottom of the banner. My words and probably some of the, I guess that's water, water, um, coming off of the can, it won't fit on the banner if I, if I make it any wider or any taller. And so you might need to use Content Aware Fill to build in the blue to fill the top of the banner. But we'll get there as time allows. Okay, so now I have my artwork. I kind of have the amount of artwork that I need to sit on top of the banner, but it's not lining up. And so one of the things that we cover in this chapter is transforming. And so if you do edit and free transform, you'll get these handlebars and you could rotate your picture or you could hold, well, you don't even have to hold shift. You could change the size of it. I would recommend holding shift because it constrains the aspect ratio. But you'll notice that it kind of stays as a rectangle. It doesn't allow me to kind of warp it and put it into um, the placement along the same angle as the banner. 
So if instead of choosing Edit Free Transform, you use Edit Transform, you'll see that there's all these different options. Like you can rotate your picture, you can flip it if maybe something's pointing the wrong direction. You can warp it, you can do perspective, you can do different things. And so what I'd like you to do is kind of click through and kind of see what these do. And so Scale does what we just did with Free Transform. If you click on it, you can now scale it, make it bigger, smaller. You can actually stretch it a little bit. Again, if you hold shift, it will constrain the aspect ratio. I'm hitting this do not accept change button up here because I don't want to keep those changes. If you go back and choose edit, transform, rotate, it's the same idea. If you do skew, it allows you to, to distort the picture by basically making it look like it's in perspective. And so you can move the you can move the, the corners of your document. It doesn't work so well though, like I'm not holding shift right now, but you can see it's kind of snapping to angles. And so that might work for something you're doing. Maybe you have it and you want it to look, maybe you want it to look like um, Star Wars text. And so it's like real wide at the bottom. And then it's real small at the top and you want it to look like the text is going backwards. Hopefully everyone knows what I mean by the Star Wars text. Um, if you go back to edit and then uh, not free transform, just regular transform. You can also do distort, and with distort, it, I like this one the best for what we're going to do. It allows you to basically put the corners of the image where they should be, and so I can't see the corner for the one I have right now, so I'm just going to kind of toss it over here for a minute. But I can, and this is something I do, is I'll usually drop it further in than I need it so I can see where I'm going with the, the anchor point, and then I'll move it up. Down here I'll do the same thing, I'll kind of bring it in so it looks funny, and then bring it out. I don't have um, the corner in the bottom left hand corner, and so I'm just going to mimic the, the, the line right here of the left side of the banner. And so you can pull that over. Again, I'm going to pull it on the inside, and then I can come down and line up the corner of the banner here. And then we can go like this. And you can kind of move it back and forth, because I the, you can't see the top right corner or the bottom left, and so the angle of the banner might be funky. And so you can kind of move it back and forth until you think it looks about right. And now it looks like it's on the building instead of sitting kind of facing you. And when you're done, you can hit the check mark to accept your changes. And then now your, your sign looks like it's sitting on the front of the building. And depending on what your needs are, that might work. It, it, from a distance, it looks like it's on the building. Um, if you don't like it, you could always make adjustments. Let's say that, um, like in my example from the slideshow, uh, it just was too bright after I copy and pasted those two posters. It's way brighter than the rest of the picture. And so you could use anything that we've learned this semester to make changes. So you could decide that the poster's too bright and you could use adjustment layers to lower the saturation of the picture. Or maybe the picture's just right but the background's not and you could do vice versa. And so on layer one here, which is my Pepsi ad, I'm going to apply an adjustment layer. And so if we use, well, I describe it as the black and white cookie, the little adjustment layer icon, you can see there's lots of different options. And so Vibrance is one that's covered in this course. Uh, if you open up the Vibrance or you add a Vibrance adjustment layer, you can lo uh, lower the Vibrance on your picture. I'm going to get rid guy so you can see it. So if you increase the vibrance it gets more blue. If you lower it it gets less blue. You can also decrease saturation if it's too bright in the picture. And then you can try to get the pictures to line up. You don't have to have it apply to both layers though. And so if we let's undo. Um, so instead of applying to all the layers beneath you can create a selection, and so I'm going to use my magic wand tool. The magic wand tool, if we click an active area, it will select similar um, colors in the image. And so if I click on the blue, it's going to try to grab all these blue colors. But if I want all of the banner and none of the background, so I turn the background layer off, you can see it's transparent. And so if I click out here on the right hand side, it grabbed all the background over here. And then if I hold shift, I can grab the other side. And then, now I want to create an adjustment layer that applies just to the banner. If we do select and inverse, instead of having the background selected, we will now have the Pepsi uh, banner selected. And so now when you apply your Vibrance 
layer, you can see that it comes with a layer mask. And now when I lower the vibrance, it's not affecting the back image, it's only affecting the, the Pepsi image. And so you probably don't want to take it way too far, but maybe just bump it down just a little bit, and then you decrease the saturation. And then maybe now it looks like it's attached to the building more. If after you play around with it, you still think it's not looking exactly the way that you wanted it to look, it doesn't look as natural as you want, you could use layer blending modes. That's another option. And so you could uh, click through and try different options. You could do like an overlay. You know, overlay is going to blend the two images together, but maybe that doesn't work so well with this image because it has the text in the background. Um, you can kind of click through and, and see if that works for you. If you're going to make it normal, if you're going to do that, in this case, you'd have to get rid of the artwork that's on the banner. And so in order to do that, there are a number of ways to do it, but I would recommend, I don't want to zoom that way, I'd recommend using content aware fill because a lot of the things that you do, that will be one of the easiest ways to get rid of the parts that you don't want. And so if you select a part of the image and choose edit fill and then content aware, you can deselect, start to get rid of some of the, the elements that you don't want. You have to be careful though because if you try to do all of it at once it might not work as well. And so you might find that it works better if you do one character at a time or you could even try doing smaller chunks like this and choose edit fill, content aware. And so it did a pretty good job. It copied this guy up here though. And so then I'd have to come back and edit fill, content aware, get rid of it. Uh, we will do a whole chapter on retouching, and when we do retouching, you'll learn lots of different options. And even later in the slideshow, I'm going to show you how to use the clone stamp um, and the spot healing brush tool, and that can kind of help you get rid of those elements as well. Okay, I'm going to close out of, let's do window workspace and then reset to get my panels back. I'm going to close out of these two images, and I'm going to move on. I know this is becoming a longer video, but that's okay. I am going to... Oops, I hope I didn't close out of too many images. Um, I also have the second example. And so the second example, let's close out of that, requires a portrait. It doesn't really require a portrait, but in my example, it was a portrait, right? And so these are kind of popular where you have a picture and then part of the image is, is changed into a sunset or some pattern or something like that. And so in order for it to work, we need a picture. And I have a couple pictures here, actually. So I'm going to do this three times. I just forgot to open them. OK, so I have my images. I have this guy here. I thought he had a kind of a cool feel like there's a story behind him, so I grabbed him, and then I grabbed this girl too. Uh, because when you have a lot of dark and light areas, it works best in the picture. I also grabbed this man, because he's not in black and white, but if you wanted to do this, you could use a color image, and I'll show you some options, but uh, mostly I'll show you how to make it black and white for it to work. And so let's start with the boy here. So I have the boy, and I want to um, change part of the image. And so in order to do this, I'm going to add an adjustment layer, and I'm just going to add a solid color one so that you can see how it works. Okay, And so I have a solid color adjustment layer, and I have the guy on the bottom. I'm going to duplicate the background layer, and I'm going to move it above the, the color. And so what I basically want to do is I want to say, kind of show me through the little boy to the blue background and I want some of the picture to become blue and some of it not to become blue and we already know one way to do that right that's a layer mask but if we use a layer mask we would have to determine what parts of the image we'd see and what parts we don't and so what you can do instead is you can change the layer blending mode on this background layer and if you choose um, darker color or lighter color you will see that some of the image shows through and some doesn't. And so this is darker color. And so whichever color is darker is what's going to show through on your image. And if I choose lighter color, whatever color is lighter is going to show through. And so this looks kind of more like 
the Emma Watson picture that I showed, because it's just one color, it doesn't look right. But if we replace this fill color adjustment layer with, let's say, a gradient adjustment layer, you can see that because it's there's different tones in the, the gradient, different amounts of the image show through um, from one layer to the next. And so if we switch this back to darker color, now you get a different look altogether. And so in order to get the look that I had for the example in the slideshow, you need to find the background image that you want to use. And so you need to combine these images in some way. I'm just going to copy and paste. So I'm going to do Command A to select all or Control A on a PC, Command or Control C to copy. And then if I go back to the image of the little boy, you can Command V to paste. And because I have already um, set up that adjustment layer on the little boy's picture, then you can see that through it you're seeing the picture. Now the picture is really big and so what you probably want to do is you want to make sure they're the same size before you get started. But watch what happens when I choose Edit, Free Transform. So I'm on layer one which is the picture of the sunset. You can see the picture is much bigger than what you can see in the image and so if you resize that you'll make it smaller and now if I turn the little boy layer back on you can see that it's blending through in different levels. Maybe um, this isn't the best option for for this image, right? Maybe you click through and you decide something like that might look better and you decide that maybe the lighter color looks better. This looks more like the the Emma Watson and it doesn't even have to be the layer blending mode on the, the little boy image, you could switch that. You could turn that back to normal and you could change. So I put layer one above the background layer and now you could experiment with the layer blending modes, how the, the sunset layer interacts with the other layers. And so this is lightened on this one. And maybe this one isn't so great because the sun is right where his nose is. And so you try a different image. And so maybe we'll try this cloud image. We'll do Command A to select all, Command C to copy, and then come back to the little boy image and do Command B to paste. Uh, because we have, I think it was lighter on the sunset image, we would have to also apply lighter on this one. Now maybe that didn't work as well. Or maybe it does. Maybe it looks cool for whatever you're trying to do. Um, but you can click through until you find the blending layer or blending mode that looks right for your image. And so maybe it's, no, let's do darken. That didn't work either. Um, you could also lower the opacity too, and that's something I, I kind of recommend a lot. If you kind of like this look, but it's not exactly what you want, you could lower the opacity, and then you see more of the image beneath. Or maybe in this case, it's better if the the little boy image has has the, the filter applied and then you lower the opacity on him. I just want to show you that every image that you do this to you're going to get different results and so if you do it with an image and you're like that just doesn't look great it's not coming out the same different images have different values in different areas and they'll look different and so if I paste that uh, that cloud image FYI I'm going to make sure that it's smaller if I paste that cloud image and I do the same thing I did in the little boy image, it may look better or worse on this image of the girl. Uh, you can combine this with a layer mask too. Maybe you think this looks super cool, and I actually think it looks kind of cool, uh, right? But you want to see her other eye. We know how to create a hole in something so that you can see through it, right? And so if you add, if you combine this with a layer mask, and then you use your paintbrush and the color black, you can paint a hole through to her eye. Now maybe that doesn't work so well for what you're doing, um, but you have other options available. Maybe you don't even need a layer mask. Maybe you've decided since you copy, whoops, didn't want to do that. Um, maybe since you copy and pasted, you literally just want to want to erase a hole. Where did the eraser go? You want to erase a hole, and as you erase the hole, then you can see through to the original image. There's lots of different options that are available to you for the images. 
Um, then also, it doesn't matter what the image is. So some images are going to work better than others. And so, let's see, maybe this one works better. So Command A to select all, Command C, and then if we go back to either the little boy or the girl, we can paste and we can give it another try. We try light and maybe on this image it looks better. Or maybe we decide that the problem is that there's not enough contrast in the background layer. And so you add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer that's going to affect the background. And on the properties panel, you can then increase the contrast and see how as you increase the contrast, it affects the way that it will interact. And so the more, the more white the picture is, the less you're going to see of the other image. And so you can kind of play around back and forth until you get the, the look that you're going for for your project. Okay, last but not least regarding this option, um, I have found this other image on the internet and I want to use this guy. You don't have to find a black and white image, you can convert it to be black and white. And there are lots of ways to make something black and white. You can choose image, mode, and then grayscale. However, if you do this, your entire image is grayscale. And so when we paste the, the sunsets, they're going to be grayscale too. You could also go to image adjustments and you can desaturate your image. And now you have you have an RGB image that's only showing you grayscale, but that's kind of destructive, right? If I wanted to go back, I can't. Um, you could also apply um, an adjustment layer, right? And so you could choose black and white. And so it creates the look of a black and white image, but if you turn that layer off, the image is still in color. So if you need to go back to it for whatever reason, you could do that. Once you have the image, you can find a background that you like, and so these images must be different sizes. So I will, I'll stretch the sky, make it bigger, but that's actually really bad um, if you're going to output this. And if we do edit, free transform, you can hold shift and you can make the image bigger. And then now we can do the same thing we just did for the other images. Now this might not work the best, maybe we keep darken. I don't like that one. We'll go with lighten again. Um, but we also noticed, or hopefully you noticed, that when we made the image grayscale, there's no real dark darks and there's no real light lights. And that's how this effect works well. And so maybe you do uh, an additional adjustment layer that is brightness and contrast. Or one that I like a lot for this is the levels adjustment layer. And so on the levels panel, can you see that on the left hand side this is a dark uh, slider. This represents your darkest black point in your image. And see how there's no artwork in that area? If you slide it from the left to the right, you can say all the images that are from this slider to the left should be the darkest part of the image. And so as you slide it, you get a darker and darker and darker image. What you want to do is bump it over at least to where you're kind of seeing that you have little spikes. And then the same goes on the right hand side. And so you might want to pull that over a little bit to add some more light colors in your image. And then you can slide the mid-tone slider back and forth until you get the darkness you want. And maybe for, for what we're doing here, you kind of want a really dark image. So that when we turn layer 1 back on, we can move this back and forth until we get the, the contrast that we're looking for. Now his eye is kind of funky, and so you have to go back and kind of think of something to make his eye come through. Um, so it's not being uh, changed to be yellow, you could just move the background around until the background is not in a place where it's going to obstruct the vision of his eye. Okay, and then the last thing that I wanted to show you, I'm going to go back to the slideshow, was that you can combine these in two ways and you can, uh, you can, um, you can use the blending modes if you want to, but you can also use layer masks. And I, I showed that in this video, and this video is getting really long. But I'm going to trust that you remember how to make masks, and if you don't, that you'll email me and you'll ask questions.